Does the geopolitical situation, and I know you expect these questions wherever you go, but does the geopolitical situation and the Russian isolation and the inability of certain technologies to be transferred to Russia because of sanctions and because of sanctions on individuals and companies as well, is that proving a major problem? Because historically, you and others have said to me, it's not so bad for us because we have a form of Russian autarky. Well, it's not about autarky. Uh, it's a discipline. Uh, it pushed us to do more uh, on our own, but also they're opening to the partners uh, that want to work with us. Uh, yes, maybe United States are not so active right now, but Japan, uh, other uh, Eastern countries are very active in Russia, and uh, we are bringing technologies from those uh, areas of the world that are also uh, very competitive. Uh, also, we have more people who are eager to work in Russia uh, to uh, take this challenge and uh, move uh, forward. So uh, it's uh, not as good as it could be, but uh, still it's uh, uh, moving ahead. Uh, and uh, the main thing is, uh, is that uh, we are ambitious. We are not closing the country. We are integrating with our neighbors um, like Kazakhstan and uh, Belarus and some others. Uh, we are uh, opening the road uh, to uh, uh, China and uh, Arab uh, countries. So everyone who wants to work with, with us is welcome. And even despite the sanctions uh, and uh, all the difficult stuff, we are increasing our trade with Europe, uh, with uh, Italy, for instance, uh, the uh, trade turnover went uh, up 11% uh, last year, and we are going higher and higher, uh, no, 20% last year, 11% six, uh, uh, six months of this year, and we are uh, going upward again. So it's not so bad, uh, but uh, it's uh, uh, slower than... Uh, and yet even than where relationships more. with EU partners are strong, and, and they, they seem to be under threat from a president who was supposed to be um, showing a, a, a warmer hand to Russia. For instance, when I saw Jens Stoltenberg being attacked by Mr. Trump over Russian gas coming into Germany and beyond, I saw that as basically an economic argument, really, because LNG and what have you, as much as anything else as well. But, but in terms of the, those supplies, do you, do you see a threat coming from elsewhere, that actually Russian gas to Europe, where there is a very close tie, that there are threats to that? Well, Russian gas to Europe is not a threat. It's, uh, it's a product that we sell uh, and sell safely for no, no, uh, for no, no, the is it threatened well, by the fact that the Americans want American gas to come to Europe? Yeah, but it's more expensive. It's a choice. Uh, if Europeans want the more expensive gas, uh, well... It's the choice uh, that uh, Euro Europe can make, but uh, for decades uh, Russia was a safe, uh, safe um, <coughs> uh, partner for, uh, for gas. And uh, I think uh, one should understand that it comes with costs uh, switching from Russian gas to, uh, to LNG, to American gas. And uh, we are open to negotiate the conditions, uh, but again, it's about long-term partnership. Sure. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.